evening. My name is Pastor Ian, and I want to welcome our Glenbrook Church family and also uh, those who are joining us for uh, this evening's devotion. We have been journeying with Jesus on uh, this Holy Week, looking in particular through the lens of the Gospel of John and John's passion narrative uh, of Jesus. I hope it's been encouraging for you and a time in which you have been able to reflect on your own personal relationship with Jesus and what it means for you as uh, we all uh, draw near uh, to the cross and to Good Friday. In tomorrow night's uh, Monday Thursday devotion, Deborah Rolls is going to focus in on Jesus as the foot washer. And then on Good Friday morning, there's going to be a service at 11 o'clock, and we'll focus in on the meaning of the cross. And then on Easter Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, uh, once again, we'll focus in on uh, the meaning of the resurrection. But tonight's devotion focuses in on John chapter 13. And the context is the latter part of the Last Supper. Jesus and his disciples are in the upper room. Jesus has just shared the Passover meal with them. In fact, he has just finished washing their feet. But once again, John says that Jesus was, quote, troubled in his spirit, unquote. And as we discovered last night, John gives us a window into the soul of Jesus, even into his own emotional uh, life and response to uh, knowing that his crucifixion was coming near. But the trouble in his spirit in this passage is not so much about the path that he has chosen, but it is the path that one of his disciples has chosen and that only Jesus and this other disciple know about. Jesus says these words, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. Of course, we all know who Jesus is talking about. We all know the name. But the disciples on that evening in the upper room, they had no idea who Jesus was talking about. John says they all looked at each other in shock as, as Jesus uh, gave out this revelation, and they were wondering, who is he talking about? What's going on? The disciple whom is described as the one Jesus especially loved, whom some scholars would suggest was a young John, perhaps barely 20 years old, is reclining at the table to the one side of Jesus, and we get a sense that he leans over and he almost whispers this question into uh, the master's ear. Who is it, master? Who is it, Lord? The picture we get is of a young man who has looked up to Jesus, who had a close friendship with Jesus, who followed Jesus with a deep devotion, though he, like the other disciples, didn't always understand. And we also know this, that Jesus had an affection, a strong affection for John, uh, to the very point of asking John to take care of his mother Mary at the site of the crucifixion. And so in response to John's question, Jesus dips the bread into the dish and gives it to another disciple, yes, Judas, who is sitting at an arm's length away. Dipping a piece of bread into a dish and passing it on to someone in that culture was a sign of friendship. And now, paradoxically, it is also a sign of a friendship betrayed. John then says in this story that the Satan entered into Judas, meaning the accuser in Hebrew. That's what the Satan means, the accuser the one who will bring charges against another. Judas is now being used by the forces of darkness, says John, to, in a sense, bring a charge against Jesus, the messenger of light. And as we know, Judas leaves the room and disappears into the night. But we also see the larger picture. Jesus in the center, and he is flanked, on the one side by love, and on the other side, betrayal. Remember, this is Jesus who said to all of his disciples, Judas included, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to bear 
fruit. Remember, this is Jesus who has just washed his disciples' feet, including Judas. Love and betrayal. Perhaps they go together in life. And perhaps Jesus' openness to the one meant he was also bound to be open to the other as well. And maybe it is like that for us too. It is only in deep friendships we know that we risk the serious wounds that only a friend can give. And yet there's perhaps some comfort in the words that Jesus gives to Judas as he leaves the room into the darkness. Jesus looks at him and says, do it quickly. Jesus knew the agony that awaited him, and he did not want it to go on any longer than it had to. But maybe Jesus also knew the agony that was in Judas's own heart. Perhaps Judas had seen his betrayal as a failure of his own calling. Perhaps now he had given up, not just on Jesus, but also on himself. His was a deep fall, and there was no way back, or so he had convinced himself. Betrayal, just like love, is not an illusion, but it is the evidence of a relationship that is real that the relationship is never completely over, that the one who has betrayed is never free of the love of the one betrayed. And maybe that is why Jesus loved Judas. Do it quickly. In other words, my choosing of you counts more than your betrayal of me. My choosing of you counts more than your betrayal of me. Perhaps this is the way that Jesus loves us, too, on this Wednesday of Holy Week. For we are not just like John reclining at the table as the beloved disciple. But if we are honest, we too are also Judas, to whom Jesus hands the bread. My choosing of you counts more, counts more than even your betrayal of me. Profound words, deep love. Sometimes where our love turns away with regret and maybe even frustration and disgust, divine love. Jesus' love persists and prevails, and that is the amazing grace of God. And my friends, isn't this the very heart of Easter? Thanks be to God, and let us pray. Gracious and loving Lord, this evening we are once again journeying with you to the cross of Calvary. Some of us are followers and disciples. Some of us are still seeking and searching. But all of us are loved by you. We are those who are not only aware of the weight of our own sin, but even more aware of your persistent choice to love us, your insistence to call us friend. And yet we are like those who find it hard to look into a, friend, a friend's eye, for we know our thoughts and we know our deeds. And how often have we betrayed your friendship? How often have we sold you out for much less than a kiss? And so this evening we come and we ask that you would help us, for we are tempted to turn away from the friendship that you offer and take the door out into the darkness. Can we trust you even when we cannot see? Can we know you even when we don't always understand? Can we love you even when we hold our hearts at a distance? Perhaps you know us better than we know ourselves. Perhaps you choose to love us beyond our own betrayals. And yet this is why you carried your cross and rose again. 
you did not want to live without us. And so on this Wednesday evening of Holy Week, grant us your friendship, your companionship, and your steadfast love. We thank you that you, Lord Jesus, chose us. Help us by your grace to follow you. In the name of Christ we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Good night.